tall, slim build, with thin, uh, dark hair, uh, which is cut fairly short. And whoever killed Karen would have been presumably heavily bloodstained. Yes, I'm certain that that's the case, that uh, clothing would have been heavily bloodstained, and I would appeal for anyone who knows of somebody who was bloodstained on that day or who's discarded their normal clothing to contact us. Sunday the 21st of November. There's a reward, as though that was necessary in a case as, you know, really despicable as this. If you can help anyway, the number here in the studio is 0500 600 600. Or you can ring the incident room at Suffolk Police Headquarters. That's 0473 613 577. There it is, 0473 613 577. Well, since last month, there have been three arrests on photocall cases. Police were looking for a woman in connection with a series of deceptions. Fifty viewers rang, offering information. Several gave an address in the Republic of Ireland. And lengthy extradition proceedings might have followed, but having heard she was on Crime Watch, she left Ireland and moved to Dublin in Wales, where she was promptly arrested. She pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 18 months imprisonment. From last month's gallery of faces, the man bottom right was wanted on a murder charge. A viewer rang to say she'd seen him two weeks earlier in Luton. The man had been using a false name, Alfred Walker. Next morning, in a quite different part of the country, another viewer saw him, in fact, in a clothes shop in Newcastle-upon-Tyne. The store assistant was so certain it was the man he'd seen on Crime Watch the night before, he followed him out of the shop, noted where he went, and summoned the police. The suspect gave his name as Alfred Walker. He's now, in his real name, being charged with murder. And the man top right was wanted in connection with the theft. A few days after the programme, a Crime Watch viewer rang the incident room suggesting a name. A man's now been arrested and charged with two offences of theft. And now here are Detective Constable Jackie Hames and Superintendent David Hatcher with this month's photo call. First, have you seen this man recently? He's Colin Anderton and Cambridge Police would like to speak to him in connection with a murder. On Monday the 31st of January, Julie Hughes was found murdered in her home in Fenditton, Cambridge. Colin Anderton's car, a red Ford Sierra, registration G325NEW, was found three miles away on the Gog Magog Hills. Colin Anderton's 47, 5 foot 9, of medium build and has a moustache. He also has a distinctive scar from his left ear to his chin. If you know where he is, please call. If you work in the auto trade, this man may be familiar. He's James Patrick McHale. Our colleagues in Norfolk would like to talk to him about a series of thefts and deceptions. James McHale owned Tirewise, a business selling tyres in Great Yarmouth. The company has now ceased trading, leaving thousands of pounds in debts. Mr McHale and his wife Dawn left their house in Hemsby last October and haven't been seen since. James McHale is five foot six and heavily built. He may now be clean shaven and is known to use several aliases, including Gerald Patrick Murphy and Patrick Gerald McHale. If you know where he is, please call us now. If you recognise this man, you may help solve a series of armed robberies in Leicestershire. He's seen here last summer robbing the Alliance and Leicester Building Society in Odeby. After passing the cashier a note, he demanded money and then threatened her with a handgun. He's in his mid to late twenties, around five foot ten, with ginger hair. If you know him, call us tonight. If you travel regularly on intercity trains, you might have seen this man, Richard John Whiteside. He's a frequent British Rail traveller, and here he is withdrawing cash from the Royal Bank of Scotland in Macclesfield. During the past six months, credit cards have been stolen and used fraudulently around Manchester and the North West. Richard John Whiteside is 26 years old, 6 foot 2 of slim build and has thick black hair. He also has mum and dad tattooed on his hands. If you know where he is now or if you can help with any of our photo call cases, please call us. Here's the free call number 0500 600 600, 0500 600 600. Last month's reconstructions prompted something like 800 calls, mostly on the murders of Samantha Bissett and her daughter Jasmine. You may recall a clinical psychologist hoped the killer might even call in. He hasn't done so, so far at any rate, but detectives have a lot to follow up. They still, though, need to find and eliminate this van, seen in Plumstead last November. Notice in particular the curtains in the window. Please call if you recognise that vehicle. There were a lot of new leads on the armed robbery in Burnley, in which a police officer was shot. Little, though, alas, on the murder of Paul Logan. Mark you, these things can take time. Back in June of 1992, we reconstructed clues to a rape in Wiltshire. A woman had been attacked after an evening class in Swindon College. A viewer saw the programme and proposed a name. 
Now, almost two years after the crime, a man has been arrested and is now awaiting trial. Another more recent case has also led to an arrest. You may remember last September, we showed how a hairdresser coming home from work was attacked and almost killed, in fact, near riding stables outside Darlington. A viewer rang in with the name of a man who has now been charged with rape and a number of other serious sexual offences. One of the most frightening kinds of crime, and also luckily one of the most unusual, is where people are confronted in their own homes. Kent police are hoping someone tonight will recognise the descriptions of two armed men who put a jeweller and his family through an ordeal lasting nearly 12 hours. It happened less than four weeks ago, so the family is still suffering very much from shock. Our reconstruction begins early in the morning on Saturday, February the 19th, in Deal, in Kent. At a quarter to seven that morning, as Shanine Tester was beginning her Saturday paper round, she saw two men in a parked car outside her house. Um, I thought it was a bit odd because not many people sat outside in the cars. And when I got to the bottom of the path, the driver got out and we looked at each other. And he looked like he'd been in the army or somewhere by the haircut. And he looked like he liked going abroad because he had a really nice suntan. An hour later, the Blue Sierra was still parked in Rectory Road. Just round the corner lives Chris Howe, who owns a jewellery shop in Deal Town Centre. Good afternoon. Oh, hello. So this is Roberts. Of course, of course. I've been in business here in Deal as a, as a jeweller. We opened in uh, September 1985. We've got a full retail business with a, with a workshop. My father was a jeweller, had a retail business in Margate, and... Uh, so that's where I learnt the trade. That's so, uh, We've lived in Deal for the past six years. It's a family town, really. A lot of character. <laughs> Our two beautiful daughters, Ellen and Carla. So I'm married to Monica, who's German. Ice skating's on. Oh, Carla, would you switch to the channel, please? It's now early evening on Sunday, February the 20th. Monica's mother was over from Germany, staying with the family for a while. Oh, decent, die Franzose schon da. Tobel den kommen next, glaube ich. Ja. Darling, can you watch my back? Yes, yeah, sure. Being a jeweller, Mr. Howe was always apprehensive when there were unexpected callers. Please. Calm down. Calm down. Keep quiet. Don't move. Eyes down. Don't hurt her. She's old and she doesn't speak any English. Get on the floor, hands behind your back. Look, we're not going anywhere. Don't handcuff me. I'm not going to cause any problems. They were obviously, uh, you know, t two very professional guys. Don't look at him. Look at that floor. They were smartly dressed. Trousers were neatly pressed, shoes polished. When they made signs to each other, it was normally by hair movement or finger movement and gestures. Everybody behave. Nobody gets hurt. The big impression I got that they, they seemed to be of a military type. They were, they were very frightening and we were terrified. And uh, that, that continues through the night. Get comfortable. It's going to be a long night. I just remembered keeping the girl's head down, especially Eleanor, because once in a while she seemed to want to turn around when she heard a movement. And his eyes. Keep your eyes down, don't look at him. 
everything went through your head what what might could happen 